Race drivers, it's Enzo with the Race Driver Coach Show, and if you follow this channel for a while now, you get the idea that I kind of share thoughts, lessons, things I can extract from the drivers that I coach and I work with, and I bring them to you. So say if I've just been inspired for some reason, we've had a race weekend, and, it, and, and I know it's going to be a valuable lesson to you guys, I share it. No matter what it is, I'm like, you know what I learned from last weekend? It was this, and I think it can help you. That's pretty much where I come from. And, or a lot of the time I do anyway, if I haven't got a pre, a thought of what I'm gonna do a show about. And this one comes from, no surprise to people who follow this channel, it comes from Singapore, Liam Lawson in the Alpha Towery. Now I spent the whole weekend, every single session, because obviously I wanna keep an eye on him, I wanna give him all the feedback I can give. I spent it on his onboard, watching him, going through every single lap. So even in the race, the Grand Prix, I just stayed on his car. And when somebody was behind him, like a Hulkenberg was attacking him, or Albon, if you watch the race, was attacking him, I jumped to their car and watched him from behind. Anything I can learn, and we can talk about as we debrief after the race weekend, and it's valuable because no one's really, you know, even the F1 team, no one's really looking at the stuff when it comes to personal performance, which is my bag, this is my area. So what I took from it, without sharing any of his secrets or things that he's got to work on or whatever, something I took from it, and as I was watching it, I was thinking, you know what, the race drive, the strivers that watch this channel can take from this, can learn from this. The thing that stuck with me was just pure mental resilience. Now this is a kid, right, from a working class background who had to actually borrow money to fly his parents out this weekend. It was great to see his parents there, Jared and Christy, and his girlfriend, they're all out there with him, sharing this moment he's got, and just, you know, because it's a proud moment for parents, when all that work, because his dad helped him in karting, you know, he prepared it, he took him to all the races, he motivated him, he, you know, he was really, get out there if it's wet. His dad was the driving force all the way up until he came to Europe when he had to pretty much put the bag on his back, come to Europe and, and fend for himself, which is when I met him, 2018, 17, 18. And when the parent sees a driver there, it's special, of course. It's like, I can't believe this is all happening. I'm proud. This is amazing. So they're going through all the emotions. So it was so good to see them both there and enjoying it. Loved it. They deserve it a lot. Um, and everybody else who's helped him, like Grant McDonald, all the people. Grant Baker was there, another person that um, helped Liam, and all the other sponsors. It's all come together, so it's a special moment. But one thing you take from that when it's a special moment is the driver has to wear that pressure, if you like. Everybody's saying, we've worked towards this for the last 15 years. This is it. It's on you, kid, to bring it home. You can see it that way, and if you do, you can help. That can really put pressure on you, and then you don't perform as good as you should do, right? So that's one thing. That's one element that's, on, that's somewhere in the back of his mind. Even if he's not thinking about it consciously, it's there. Then the other element, the career, is like, you've got one single shot here, a small window, which I spoke about, small window to show what you're all about. And I want you to jump into this Formula One car. Just imagine me, this is talking, me talking to you. I want you to jump into this Formula One car now in the middle of a season, unprepared. You haven't really driven this car and you've got to perform. Get out there and do it. Your life, your career depends on it. That's another thing that he's faced with and he's living right now. And I must admit, he's handling it amazingly and nothing more nothing showed me this more than in that race in Singapore so as I'm sat there watching him and you've got the Hulkenbergs and Perez and even Verstappen behind you attacking you and you're driving a car that is seriously loose I mean this thing was sliding all over the place the tires were old the guys behind you have got much newer tires softer tires they're coming for you you're in a position where you're just about in the points for the first time and for you to score F1 championship points, that's massive for the team, it's massive for your career, and guess what, he did it, if you haven't seen it, he did it, he finished P9, and that is the highest position that that team have finished all year. The car before then had only managed P11 in the hands of Ricciardo and De Vries, I think De Vries got 11th or 12th, as you can see here, he has outperformed people that have got more experience and that also showed me mental resilience. 
So you're watching this guy driving with all this pressure at a circuit where it's got 62 laps, and I've done the calculations, 62 laps, that's 1,178 corners in a row that you've got to do well in a row, right? Okay, you're in the safety car for some of it, but you've got to keep executing, braking at the right point, getting that minimum speed and making sure you're getting the right exit, even though the car's heavy with fuel or it's got, you know, the tires are worn, you've got problems with the car and you're trying to fix them on the go. You have got to make sure your driving is on point and you're maximizing each and every single lap. 1,178 corners in a row. And you've got all the pressure on the world and you've got people behind you attacking you. Yet, I didn't see Liam make a mistake. I saw cars in front. Piastri locking up and Alonso going off. Magnussen went wide a few times. I've seen all these drivers with experience making mistakes. But this kid who's driving a car that shouldn't be that high up the grid is executing, he's delivering lap after lap. And I was like, mate, that's probably the best drive I've ever seen you do in my life. Okay, it's the longest one you've ever done because it is nearly two hours of just pounding around the circuits in that humidity. So it's difficult. It's long on more elements than one, not just the laps, but it's just the, the way you experience it. It seems like it's going on forever because the walls are there and it takes a lot out of you. You know, the drivers were knackered afterwards. He could barely talk afterwards. But you did a good job. Now let's just peel back what you did well, how we can repeat it. What is it you want to do better? Fine. That's a normal coach's role, right? To sort of highlight the goods, the things that were the strengths and the weaknesses, and then you work on everything. And you learn from everything, which is great. But again, you watching this, what can you take from this? Well, it's just the importance one was the first thing that came to mind was for you to put yourself in a position where you feel that pressure. Because if you want to be a race driver and you want to succeed in life in general, you've got to put yourself in, in scenarios and situations where you, you in the realization that you must perform or it's over. You get yourself into that position as often as you can. Because if you put yourself outside your comfort zone and get into situations where you're really asked to show and someone's going, asking you, show me where you're at. And if you do, we'll give you an opportunity. If you can put yourself in them positions all the time, every single week, you're going to fail more than the average person, but you're going to open up opportunities. And I want to just ask you if you're doing that enough in life. So if you're going for a career or anything, are you finding yourself week after week not really putting yourself out there, not selling yourself, not going for them job interviews or auditions or tests that you could actually do, not talking to those sponsors that you could and not facing failure? Because if you're not, you're robbing yourself. You're not really pushing yourself. You're just dreaming of becoming a race driver or reaching the dizzy heights in your career. But actually, if you look back, when you're older and you look back, you're saying, I didn't really give it everything. I could have done more. That's what I don't want. What can you do this week? What can you do today? Even if it's eight, nine at night, what could I possibly do that pushes myself out there? Is there someone I could contact? And start to really think about this in your life now and have goals. Because at the end of the day, you need something to shoot for. And that goal needs to force you. It can't be a little goal. It needs to be something really far out like... I don't even think I can do that. I don't think I've got the skill or the self-belief. That's the goal for you. Because at least then, even if you get half away, half the way there, you're going to have a good life. You're going to have a good time trying anyway. Second thing I took from this was mental resilience. This is something I really want you to knuckle down on. It's you being in, in that situation, like I just said, and putting yourself out there, but not letting it defeat you. It's still you being at your best, even though you're in an uncomfortable situation. And I want you to train this. You can train this on online racing. You can train this by each time you do go for some kind of sponsor meeting and you mess up and your words dry up, you stutter, you find out why. Why did that happen? Was I worried about the way they were perceiving me and I was sounding and then are they gonna say no? No wonder you stuttered. You're putting way too much pressure on. So next time I'm gonna, I'm gonna set up another meeting immediately with somebody else and this time I'm gonna focus on them. What do they want? What can I do for them? Or if you're in a race, it's like, right, what do I need to focus on and think about in order for me to concentrate on this next corner and keep focused lap after lap? And you play with this. 
So don't do not let your your mental weakness. Let's just be you know say it straight. If you've got a mental weakness, you've got a chink in your mental armor. I want you to face it and come up with a solution for it. Because over the years, obviously, the people I work with, they've all had this chink in their armor and they still have. Still got one somewhere. It can be prodded and, and brought up and it can make them crumble. But they work on it consciously. So after every single race weekend, after every single meeting or whatever it is you're going for, you debrief it, but you debrief it in a mental way as well as the physical and skills way. You're like, right, mentally, how was I? How did I perform? Was I confident? Was I comfortable? Was I in control? If yes, how? I'll do it again. I want to repeat it. If not, why? What was I thinking about? How did I create that pressure and then I folded under pressure? Interesting. Next time, I'm going to try this and this and this and have strategies in place. I want you to really go deep into the mind and find out how you can be at your best no matter what situation you're in. So if the pressure's on, you're on defense, how can you overcome that and get back in control and get on offense? Your life depends on you, how you perform. That race showed me that. And when I work with drivers, it's always the same. They can have a bad setup. They may not have the knowledge of how to drive a certain way, but it's the driver that drives things. It's the person, the individual, how they operate their mind and how they deal with what's in front of them that's the key. So if you're not at a level where you need to be in a certain situation, be at peace with it, but get to your level and just perform there. Don't let the situation beat you and then you perform even worse. You get to your level, your crappy level, and you maintain that and then you build the skills and the knowledge. This is what I took from the Singapore Grand Prix and I think it can help you, but basically, to really sum it up, you get out there, push yourself outside your comfort zone, get yourself doing things that really make you feel uncomfortable and expose you to failure. And then afterwards, have a quick debrief. How did I do? What can I do better next time? And get out there and do it again and again and again, and you will get where you want to get.